Kevin Black here. I'm the Chief Scientist at Resilient Cognitive Solutions and Chair of the Cognitive Science Society. It's in my role as Chair of the Society that I get to come to you today at our annual business meeting. We have three main goals associated with this presentation. First, I have a lot of thank yous to deliver to all of the people who've been instrumental in making this year's conference as successful as it's been and in helping the society function successfully over the course of the past year. Second, I'm gonna talk with you about the mission of the Cognitive Science Society, how we pursue that mission, and some of the things that we've accomplished recently in the service of cognitive science. And finally, we'll wrap up with a look to the future and some of the opportunities that lie ahead of us. So let's get to it. We'll start, of course, with thanking our COGSCI 2021 conference co-chairs, Tecumseh Fitch, Klaus Lam, Helmut Leder, and Kristen tesmar Rivda, and their amazing on-site team members, David Sheridan, Peter Rantasa, Christine Sporer, and Gersha Westphal Fitch. This group put together a vision for what COGSI 2021 could be, and they saw that vision through to fruition. We owe them a huge debt of gratitude for all of their hard work, and please know that on behalf of the entire governing board, we appreciate your efforts and look forward to celebrating the success of COGSI 2021 with you at some point in person in the future. In addition to their on-site team members, they had a large organizing committee, of course, because you have to for a conference this size. And we want to express our appreciation for all of the work that all the people on the organizing committee did working with our conference co-chairs to make COGSI 2021 the success that it is. Beyond even the organizing committee, of course, there's the program committee. These dozens of people played important roles in helping select the content for this year's conference. We appreciate the dedication and service of the entire program committee. And then of course, beyond even the program committee, there are the hundreds of people who reviewed submissions for this year's conference and provided substantive, critical, constructive feedback on those submissions. And we appreciate the work that everyone did to help contribute to reviewing at this year's conference. Finally, rounding out the thanks for all the fabulous efforts that went into COGSI 2021. We must thank Anna Drummy, our wonderful executive officer, for her total dedication to making sure that this year's conference was a success and, in fact, ensuring that the entire society continues to run successfully on a monthly, weekly, and daily basis. Thank you, Anna, for everything that you have done as executive officer for the society. It really is extraordinary. And thanks very much to our conference management company, Podium, who have taken a very strong leadership role in the execution of the ground game for the conference. We appreciate the entire Podium team and all the efforts that they're putting into the society and the conference at this point. But special thanks to Jude Ross and Michelle Smith, who are really our point people for much of what we do on a daily basis, both at the societal level and also at the conference level. Thank you, Jude and Michelle. We always have new people at the Cognitive Science Conference, and that's especially true with some of our recent growth and the shift last year and this year to a virtual format for the conference. And it often comes up in discussions about the society that uh, people aren't clear how the Cognitive Science Society works. So how, how does it work? Well, a simple version of that story is that the Activities of the society, which is a nonprofit professional society, are overseen by a governing board. We have 15 elected members of the board. There's an executive committee of four people made up of the chair, past chair, future chair, and executive officer. 
and the chair heads the executive committee. This is a picture of our current governing board. This image contains all currently elected 15 members plus the three newly elected members who will rotate onto the board at the end of this year's conference and our executive officer, Anna Drummy. We want to be sure to thank our departing board members, Michael Frank, Dedry Gentner, and Terry Regier are all ending their terms on the board. They've served with distinction and wisdom, and we deeply appreciate all of the time and effort that they've put into their years of service on the Cogside Governing Board. We also want to recognize and celebrate the fact that we have our three newest board members joining us at the end of this year's conference. Congratulations to Stephanie Dennison, Tilby Guxin, and Natalie Sabans. Um, and really, congratulations to the whole society. We have this fantastic cohort of new board members rolling in, and we're looking forward to working with all three of you. At the same time that those new board members will be joining the board, our executive committee will be going through its standard annual refresh. So this is by design. On an annual basis, the composition of the executive committee evolves. Asfa Majid is finishing her time on the executive committee, having served as future chair, chair, and past chair. And we thank Asfa for an extraordinarily busy and successful term on the executive committee. Thank you, Asifa, for everything that you've done for the society. Asifa will still be on the governing board, fortunately, but no longer on the executive committee, so we have her services on the board for one more year. Meanwhile, I will become past chair. Kenny Smith becomes the chair of the society, and very happy to announce that Adele Goldberg has agreed to serve as future chair, rotating into the executive committee and beginning her three-year term on the execcom. So thank you, Adele, for agreeing to provide that service to the society, and congratulations, Cognitive Science, as we have a very capable new executive committee member rolling in in Adele Goldberg. Now, how could you get involved? if you're interested in being involved with the governing board, people interested in helping the society manage its affairs can actually self-nominate for the governing board on an annual basis. A call goes out, and when you see that call hit, you should respond positively if you're interested. The decision on governing board members is made via a society-wide election, and in order to serve on the board, you must be willing to come to the conference every year. Nominations occur in the spring and terms start, as I said previously, after the conference. To be clear, elected positions on the governing board are only a subset of the important ways that people can serve the society. In fact, it is the case that our journal editors, and these are our new executive editors, Andrea Bender, the executive editor of Topics in Cognitive Science, and Rick Dale, executive editor of the journal Cognitive Science. They, in fact, serve as ex officio members of the governing board, as do Nick Chater and Rick Cooper. Nick Chater is chair of the Glushko Prize Committee, and Rick Cooper is chair of the Romahart Prize Committee. So they also are ex officio members of the governing board meaning they are on the board, but they don't vote on matters that come up for a vote within the board. And we'll soon need a new executive officer. Anna Drummy has been serving as our executive officer for the last six years, com com coming up on six years. She has decided not to pursue an additional three-year term and so her time with us will come to an end at the end of December, end of this calendar year, 2021. If you have an interest in serving as our new executive officer, 
please do reach out and make that known. There is an advertisement out for that position either now or in the very near future. And we'll say a little bit more about that at the end of this presentation. But that's not all. In fact, there are even more ways for cognitive scientists to engage with the governing board. For instance, we have a graduate student representative position on the board. That's currently filled. Intan Wardani at Ghent University is our graduate student rep. And we're very happy to have her serving with us on the board. The graduate student representative position is a two-year position, and Intan will hold that position for another year until August of 2022. But eventually that will come up to be available for others to compete for. And so if you're a graduate student who may be interested in that, keep an eye out for that advertisement sometime next year. Another example is our digital content production manager position. This position is currently filled. Happily, it's the case that Marcelo Viridiano joined us earlier this year. And we're thrilled to have Marcelo on our team he has been doing a fantastic job. And so although this position is not available for people to apply to, it is another example of a kind of position that provides an opportunity to engage with the governing board and serve the Cognitive Science Society. It's worth noting that our governing board committees are another mechanism by which cognitive scientists can engage with the board and serve the society. So if you take a close look at this list, you'll see that although the dominant membership of each of these committees is comprised of governing board members, that's not universally the case. We have plenty of opportunity for interested cognitive scientists around the world to engage with any number of these different committees, and we encourage that. So if you have an interest in participating in the running of the affairs of the society and serving on one of these committees, please do contact us and let us know. All right, so far I've told you about the fact that the society is run by a governing board and that there are some means by which Cognitive scientists are able to engage with that board or become a part of it. But what is it that the society actually does? Our mission within the Cognitive Science Society is to promote cognitive science as a discipline and to foster scientific interchange among researchers. The mission statement is longer than that, but that's the gist of it. And to do this, we engage in some fairly high visibility activities like holding the annual Cognitive Science Conference, publishing our journals, Cognitive Science and Topics, issuing awards, prizes and honors to celebrate excellence within Cognitive Science. And I went through many of those in detail in the opening session at this year's conference. And we participate in an assortment of forms of digital communication with our members, through our website, email, Twitter, our blog, and our newsletter. So these are the higher visibility, often external facing activities. But the governing board, of course, is busy throughout the year, engaged in all manners of managing the affairs of the society. And it's not always obvious what's going on behind the scenes. So. What have we done for you lately? Well, here's a sampling of some of the board's major muscle movements. These are items on which the board voted over the course of the last 12 months and running quickly down through the list. We increased the size, diversity, and compensation of our journal editorial boards. We established an executive editor outreach fund thanks to the generosity of our new executive editors, and that fund will be used to create outreach materials for high school and undergraduate students, especially for groups underrepresented in cognitive science, and to create the new Disciplinary Diversity and Integration Awards in Cognitive Science, which are uh, have been actually awarded for the first time this year and were announced in the opening session. 
in response to the ongoing pandemic and in recognition of the fact that the pandemic has had really unequal and highly variable effects across our membership base, we instituted the first ever pay what you can membership option to ensure that membership in the Cognitive Science Society remained available to all. We converted our diversity and inclusion travel awards into diverse, diversity and inclusion conference awards in anticipation of the uh, eventual reality that this year's conference, once again, unfortunately needed to be converted into a virtual event as opposed to an in-person event. And that way we're able to use that award money to encourage participation in the conference, whether it's in person or virtual. We selected Marcella Verdiano as our digital content production manager, as I mentioned previously, and Adele Goldberg as our next chair elect. We approved a cognitive diversity proposal for the 2022 conference, along with an increased need-based travel support for their invited symposia. We approved support for a U.S. National Academy of Sciences workshop on international engagement in psychological journals, consistent with our priority to improve on our own globalization and internationalization of cognitive science and allied sciences. We approved the candidate slate for the 2021 Governing Board cohort and held that election, which is why we now have our three new board members joining us after this year's conference. We set the registration rates for COGSI 2021 as low as reasonable to cover anticipated expenses and a little bit more about that in a few slides. We increased the executive officer stipend and set the treasurer stipend, approved meetups associated with COGSI 2021, and some of those may be going on right now, certainly should, should be happening this week in at least four or five different locations around the world. And we made some improvements to the CSS member demographic data that are collected when people are joining or renewing. These are not new actions on the part of the governing board, but rather continuations of actions that were approved last year. They include hardship waivers for conference registration, family care grants, and the availability of the COGSI Grove as a means of offsetting the environmental impacts of participating in the annual conference. As you can see, the board has been busy. A lot of things have been approved, and many of those things have expenses associated with them. So how is all of this funded? Well, our primary source of income comes from our journals, Wiley, our publisher, pays dividends to publish cognitive science and topics. Membership fees are another important source of revenue, of course, and we use these funds to cover our operating costs and new initiatives. We also have truly generous standing sponsorship from the Robert J. Glushko and Pamela Samuelson Foundation towards society awards such as the Rummel Hart Prize Elman Prize, and the Glushko Dissertation Prizes. The Cheyenne Gould Award was established through a fundraising campaign and does not incur any additional annual expense on the part of the society. That gives you some information about how our general operating costs are covered, but what about the conference? How is COGSI 2021 funded? Well, here you can see a breakdown of our anticipated expenses. These are anticipated expenses at this point because the conference isn't over. None of this is final at this point. And the same thing for our revenue. Uh, registration is continuing and certainly not complete at the time that I'm recording this video. We have a set of sponsors and exhibitors there may be additional ones that come in, but we've brought in some revenue from those sponsors and exhibitors, and we very much appreciate that. And then the Cognitive Science Society contributes funds to cover the conference awards and also will make up the difference between the amount of revenue that we bring in 
and our total expenses. So currently, given, given that difference and the cost of conference awards, we're anticipating right now something in the neighborhood of a 45 to 46 or so thousand dollar contribution on the part of the Cognitive Science Society out of operating funds towards this year's conference. Looking forward to future conferences, we are absolutely thrilled to say that we have first-rate co-chairing teams in place for both the 2022 and 2023 conferences. The team putting together the cognitive diversity theme for COGSI 2022 is Jennifer Culbertson, Andrew Perfors, Hugh Rabagliati, and Veronica Ramanzoni. And for 2023, when the theme of the conference will be Cognition in Context. Our co-chairs will be Micah Goldwater, Florencia Angoro, Brett Hayes, and Desmond Ong. Many thanks to both of those teams for their commitment to the future of the Cognitive Science Conferences. It may be the case that you have a vision for a future CogSci conference. And if you do, we encourage you to reach out to someone on the governing board. That could be me, it could be Anna Drummy, it could be anyone that you know uh, with the governing board. And let us know that you're interested in putting together a proposal for a future conference. As we look to the future, we also need to recognize that we are recruiting for two Cognitive Science Society leadership positions. With Anna Drummy's tenure ending, we need a new executive officer. And last year, the membership voted to approve a revision to the bylaws that created the treasurer position in the Cognitive Science Society governing board for the first time. So we have a treasurer position to fill. Both of these are stipend positions within the board, and they provide an opportunity to play truly a pivotal role in shaping the future of the Cognitive Science Society. So if you have an interest in these positions or you know someone who does, please do let us know and either apply yourself or encourage others to apply. And as my final slide, I'll simply emphasize that we really genuinely do want to work continuously to try to improve the way that we are running the Cognitive Science Society. So if you have unanswered questions or ideas about how the Cognitive Science Society could do even better, or you want to get involved, please email us at either of the emails below or drop a message into the chat at the business meeting during the conference. To wrap up, let me just finish by saying thank you for taking the time to tune in to this year's business meeting video. I know that that was a lot of material to go over, and so if you have follow-up questions or you're interested in getting involved in the society and any one of the many ways that that's possible, please reach out to me, Kevin Gluck, or to our executive officer, Anna Drummy. We would be happy to talk with you or email with you about the opportunities that are available, or answer any questions that you have. Thanks very much, and enjoy the rest of the conference.